welcome back to Games and Thoughts. I'm your host for today's episode, Traxton. This episode, we will be dealing with a charge topic, but as the nature of this episode is mostly to provide an overview of the commonly held positions of the issue, your thoughts and contributions to conversation are especially appreciated. So feel free to let us know what you think on whatever channels you see fit. In recent years, the topic of voluntary euthanasia has become one of the more pressing ethical questions of the Western world. It's a relatively new problem. Only recently have questions of legal suicide come to the forefront of our moral concerns. Needless to say, though, it is a very controversial and complex topic, and both sides of the debate have arguably good reason for believing as they do. The well-documented story of Brittany Maynard illustrates this problem well. A 29-year-old cancer patient who was given six months to live at the time of her diagnosis, Maynard campaigned for death with dignity and eventually did die as she wished with an injection of lethal drugs while surrounded by loved ones. Maynard's brain tumor produced more suffering than she was able to bear, and rather than allow it to run its course, she wished to die on her own terms. As a result of this wish, her family was forced to move from California to Oregon, as Oregon had incidentally become the first U.S. state to allow assisted suicide starting in 1997. Before her death, Maynard publicly stated that, quote, I can't even tell you the amount of relief that it provides me to know that I don't have to die the way it's been described to me, that my brain tumor would take me on its own, and went on to say, I will die upstairs in my bedroom that I share with my husband, with my mother and my husband by my side, and pass peacefully with some music that I like in the background. In my view, I can find no qualms with Maynard's right to make the decision that she did. Her death was reminiscent of Socrates's in nature, and the right that she was granted to go on her own terms prevented mass amounts of undue suffering. The argument at work here is that at a certain point, one's life can become so unbearable, with no hope of a silver lining, that it may be immoral to force them to stay alive. In other words, it may be better to not live at all than to live in sufficiently terrible and inescapable suffering. Admittedly, it's very difficult to draw a line when this is the case, and as critics of assisted suicide point out, one often isn't in a good position to objectively analyze whether their life will get better or whether it's worth living. But this objection seems to prove the assertion that those in favor of assisted suicide make, as it assumes that life is only inherently valuable insofar as the person living it isn't undergoing a certain amount of catastrophic suffering. On the other hand, there are those who object to the idea that any amount of suffering would be enough to justify the taking of one's own life those who hold the view that we might call the sanctity of human life. For these adherents, human life is so profoundly inherently valuable that to take it away is always obscene, no matter the circumstances. Here we see what is foundationally an ethical system which is not built from principles of avoidance of undue suffering. Rather, it starts from the assumption that suffering is, in a way, accidental to life, and life's value remains the same no matter the contents of one's consciousness. It seems to me that this view is in some ways intuitive in nature, as the notion of legal suicide is likely to produce a visceral feeling of discomfort whenever asserted, for reasons that aren't all bad. And further, for those of a religious persuasion, this life isn't even the only existence worth being concerned about. The belief in the certitude of an afterlife makes the suffering of this life relative to eternity, and thereby makes the undue suffering argument much less prescient. We'll conclude here although it's clear that there is still much to discuss in the public sphere regarding assisted suicide. There is no clear pathway through this obstacle, and we would be wise to take into account as many factors and perspectives as possible. So, if any of you have thoughts on this issue, be sure to leave a comment below. We enjoy conversation here at Games and Thoughts, so be sure to contact us in whatever ways you see fit. We're on Facebook, and you can also email us at gamesandthoughts18 at gmail.com. Content from this episode is cited from theindependent.co slash UK if you'd like to check out the original articles. See you all next time on Games and Thoughts. Mm-hmm.